Hi everyone, welcome to Maeve TR Creations. Today I'm making Queen Luminessa from Arc 10 of Unprepared Casters. Let's dive right in. I'm going to be making a hybrid doll using the method Enchantarium uses for their Atlantis Mermaid dolls linked below. Okay, spoiler alert, but this hybrid effect ends up failing, so I'm not going to spend too much time on it. If you want to see how it's supposed to be done, go watch Enchantarium's video after this one. I remove her hair off camera and remove the face using 100% acetone. Lumi has pointed ears, so I formed an armature to act as the base and sculpted the ear shapes out of La Dalle air dry clay. After the basic shape is formed, I sculpted in the details using a drop of water on my fingertip to smooth out the clay where necessary. Lumi has gray skin, so I prep the body with plastic adhesion spray before taking her out to my dad's workshop to airbrush her with several thin coats of light gray paint. I skewer her head onto a doll stand to make it a little easier to paint. I'm using Vallejo Model Air Paint to do this. It's designed to be used straight in the airbrush without any mixing mediums, but, but I like to add in a few drops of Golden Brand High Flow Medium just for good measure. Her tail needs painting too. It also gets a coat of plastic adhesion spray before being painted with golden brand high flow acrylic paint in fluorescent pink. The camera is entirely out of focus here, but you still get the gist, right? I realized later that her tail actually fades to green at the bottom and I'm gonna fix that later. I gathered up all of the brightest colors of hair I had in my stock box that matched the character art, and I'm going to be using these ones. I decided to do the reroute off camera this time. You know the drill. Grab strand of hair, scoop up with reroute tool, poke into head, repeat a million times, and you've got a whole head of hair. To create some cool depth and a magical effect, I added swirls of metallic watercolor paint to her tail. has pale purple tattoos across her arms and torso. In the actual art, they're various sea creatures, but I definitely can't do that at that scale, so I just painted swirly designs. I also sculpted her bra top and covered it in glitter. I sprayed her face with two layers of Mr. Super Clear and started to sketch her face, but realized pretty early on that I didn't like the expression I gave her.
so off camera I adjusted the expression to make her eyes a little bit narrower. The lighter ring around her eyes is due to me having to remove the old face with acetone, then having to repaint the gray and not precisely getting the color match. This was the point where I realized the hybrid effect wouldn't work, so I connected her torso to her mermaid tail with super glue and epoxy sculpt, and then repainted it to match and sanded it smooth. Lumi's fin is made out of warbla, which I got my dad to cut out on his laser cutter. I created the frills using my heat gun to soften the warbla, and then a metal chopstick to create the curved shape. After attaching it to her tail with super glue and air dry clay, I painted it first with a bright white base, then with the same hot pink paint and metallic colors as her tail to add some shine. Let's switch gears for a bit and make Lumi's sea cat tippy. I used this littlest pet shop cat and sculpted the tail out of air dry clay on an armature wire. I also sculpted his ears to be bigger and added the his head fin. I painted these according to the character art. For Tippy's body, I wanted to try out some paint I've actually had sitting on my desk since December. Black 3.0, aka Black is Black from Culture Hustle. I paid a small fortune to get this shipped to me from the UK and darn it, I'm gonna use it. After some editing magic, this is what Tippy looks like all done. I used the blackest black paint and some pastel colored Posca pens to add the details. Finally, I'm going to make Lumi's Bident, or a two-pronged trident. I designed it in Illustrator and had my dad cut it out of wood on his laser cutter. I primed it first with black gesso, then gave it a coat of black 3.0. The difference between the two shades of black is super noticeable in person, but the camera didn't really pick it up, so I bumped up the exposure in this clip so you can actually see how much darker black 3.0 really is. As a final step, I painted the details on the Bident with metallic blue watercolors. And with that, the doll is done. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Make sure to leave a comment, like, and hit that subscribe button. And go check out Unprepared Casters on your podcast platform of choice. See you next time.